My upravers, thank you very much for getting your Harrison Ford requests in. Yeah, we had all sorts of requests come in. Some Indiana Joneses, Blade Runners, Frantics, Air Force One were popular. And they all went in the pot and we spun the wheel and it came back with Witness. Hmm. And the film starts off in what looks like the 1800s because we see a load of folk wearing very old-fashioned clothes and pulling horses and carts and stuff like that. So it's obviously a long time ago. And they're all wearing black, so my guess is that they're off to a funeral. Hang on! 1984! What's going on here? Well, it turns out these folk are Amish. Well, the Amish are from Pennsylvania in the United States, but they've got Swiss-German origins. And my research tells me that the Amish are known for simple living, plain dress, Christian pacifism, and slowness to adopt many conveniences of modern technology, with a view neither to interrupt family time nor replace face-to-face -face conversations wherever possible, and a view to maintaining self-sufficiency. According to Wikipedia, any anyway. road. Now, yes, it turns out they have been at a funeral of Jacob Lapp. And after all the proceedings, the surviving widow uh, and her eight-year-old son, they have to catch a train in order to visit a sister. And Carl from Die Hard is obviously trying to ingratiate his son with Rachel, who's the, uh, the mum, by giving a kid a part in Prezi to play with on the train. Now, very clever touch this, because it illustrates how excited and contented the young Amos lad will be playing with what essentially is an inanimate piece of shit. I mean, if I'd have tried giving something like that to either of my kids when they were eight, they'd have told me to do one in no uncertain terms, I reckon. Anyway, Rachel and her lad Samuel take the train to visit her sister, Oh, look, there's Carl, showing off, look, trying to look all manly and impress Rachel. He looks very happy, the lad, doesn't he? My grandkids would be on bloody iPads now. You wouldn't get them to look out the window. They'd just be engrossed in the sodding iPad. Uh, yeah, any road. Yeah, they're on this train to Philadelphia where they have to get a connecting train to Baltimore. And while Samuel's gone to the bog for a poo, he witnesses a brutal murder. <laughs> And this scene is packed with tension. Very simple premise, but crack it's nerve-wracking. First up, I don't get why he didn't lock the bog in the first place. Why was he doing a poo without the bog locked? That's by the by. But as this murderer's checking the cubicles, you're thinking, oh, how's he going to get out of this one? How's he going to get out of it? But it pays to be echo at times, doesn't it? <laughs> That's excellent balance he's demonstrating there. I'd have ended up sticking my foot in bowl. Now, that's Danny Glover, that. And he's a right nasty piece of work in this film. We're used to him being a cuddly character, ain't we? Like Roger Murtaugh in uh, The Lethal Weapons. But yeah, nasty piece of work in this he is. And around, the cops come. And inevitably, they have to question Samuel because he's the only witness to murder. And we meet John Buck, played by Harrison Ford, yes. Good honest name, John Buck, isn't it? John and Buck. Obviously, likes to do things by the book. Does John Buck? Tells us an honest copper, doesn't it? And that's going to be important as we find out later on. But yeah, once they've got a description at murderers, he needs to get Samuel to give him a positive identification. Hey! Is this man, Sam? Is this him? Yeah, I'm not sure that's by the book, is it? Slamming a known criminal's mush six inches away from an eight-year-old witness. Nah, I don't think that's right, John. You can't do that these days. And after that long shot failed, it reverts back to flicking through mug shots down at the police station. And I was disappointed, to be honest, that they didn't do, like, a, a photo fit scene. I was like them photo fit scenes that they do in films. You know, like they used to have on Crime Watch or Police 5, where Shaw Taylor would describe the criminal and then they pop a photo fit up. That's what he looked like wearing the glasses. Long hair, probably in his 20s. Medium. Is that a bloke? Looks like a woman. No wonder they never caught him. 
Can you put a name to that face? Can't do a name, but I swear I saw him in the Sweeney the other day. Anyway, they can't do a photo fit, because if they did a photo fit, we wouldn't have another really gripping scene here. Because when Buck gets sidetracked by a phone call, Samuel just starts aimlessly wandering around the police station, but he stumbles across a photo. And you're thinking, oh no, what's John Buck doing? Come on, John Buck, pay attention, you silly pillock. But thankfully, he does notice. And once he's seen who Samuel's pointing to, he's fully aware of the implications. This is an inside job. You're dealing with bank coppers, folk who definitely don't do things by the book. So Buck goes to see Chief of Police, Schaefer, to explain the situation. It's McPhee, Paul. He's one of them. Obviously, this Schaefer is a bit of a father figure to Buck. You know, very trustworthy fellow, you know. Who else knows about this? Just you and I. Let's leave it that way. Yeah, that's very wise, because you don't know who else might be involved. Yeah, very trustworthy, that bloke. Anyway, as Buck pops home after his day's work with some dry cleaning, he realises he's been stalked by McPhee and a gunfight in shoes. Oh, that's not what you want after a day's work, is it? And as for this plonker... Get back in the lift, you great numpty. Bloody hell. Now, yeah, McPhee does a runner. He's on you, asshole! But Buck realises that he has been hit by McPhee. And to add insult to injury, he's bleeding all over his dry cleaning. And what a waste of money that is. Now, Buck twigs on that Schaefer ain't trustworthy at all. He's obviously, he's in on it uh, and he's a shit. So not knowing who he can trust, he does a runner and takes Rachel and Samuel back home uh, where they're sort of off the grid, ain't they? Because, you know, they're Amish. They don't have telephones or out like that. Now he's just planning on dropping them back. Will you be coming back to take Samuel to trial? There isn't going to be any trial. But as he's driving off, he succumbs to his wounds and knackers a very ornate bird table. So, not one to risk hospital where he could get found by the baddies, the Amish community take him in and perform some emergency procedures and help him to recuperate from his injuries. Now, what we get here is a classic fish-out-of-water scenario where Buck tries to blend in with the ways of the Amish. With mixed results, it has to be said. For example, when faced with conflict, the Amish will react peacefully and turn the other cheek, so to speak. Whereas Buck might resort to violence. (laughs) Yeah, I don't think that's by the book, is it? I think you'd get all in for a disciplinary for doing that, wouldn't you? Mind you, we did deserve it, didn't we? I mean, as well as being an arsehole, that's a criminal waste of ice cream, is that? Although he's already had the flake. There's no flake there, is there? Also, some of his cultural references fall flat. Honey, that's great coffee. It's a... It's a joke. It's a commercial. Tell you what, though. The granddad whizzing across the kitchen floor on his swivel chair made me chuckle. Made Buck chuckle, I know. I mean, it seems a little bit childish to me. Seems some inconsistencies in the behaviour of the Amish. You know, the granddad, he turns his nose up at Rachel dancing with Harrison Ford to the music coming from the car radio. I'm not a child. But you're acting like one. I'll be the judge of that. But I would argue he's being childish, whizzing across the kitchen floor on his swivel chair. Very immature behaviour, that. Playing silly buggers with a swivel chair. But on the flip side, Buck does prove his scent to be useful. Yeah, it gets involved on the farm, does some milking, and he manages the birdhouse, what he drove into and knackered. Looks very proficient with them carpentry tools as Harrison Ford, doesn't he? But here's a fun fact for you, if you didn't know. He used to be a carpenter. Yeah, very big on his carpentry, uh, Harrison Ford. Although I'm not sure if the Amish would approve of them power tools, what he's using there. They don't need any of them things. There's a great scene where they're knocking a barn up using hand-powered stuff. 
Very impressive. Admittedly, many hands make light work. But yeah, I'd be more than happy to have them lads come round and help me next time I'm knocking up a flat pack wardrobe from Ikea. So this ain't your run-of-the-mill action cop film, this. No, we get a very fascinating insight into the Amish way of life. And just as I'd forgotten about Schaefer and the murdering bleeders, they track down Buck and arrive at the farm to do him over. And we get a thrilling climax to the film. It's like a, a western, this. The bandits are coming back into town to murder the sheriff in a shootout. Oh, it's great. That's a brilliant shot, I reckon. Very good. So if you ain't seen the film, I won't spoil it for you. But yeah, brilliant stuff. Okie do, on two raised ratings. Well, I'd never seen Witness. I'd see it in the video shop. Picture of Harrison Ford on cover of the video. Yeah, I expected him to be like a, a tough New York cop who doesn't do things by the book. So I was never that bothered about watching it. But here's Harrison Ford, so, you know, I'm hoping for a, a three-star film. And I've got to say, I thought it were brilliant. I thought it were absolutely superb. Great film. Bit of a slow burner. You know, there's not loads of action in it. But it's more impactful because of that. You know, you're sort of waiting for the showdown at the end. Uh, and it didn't disappoint. Yeah, a lot of tension and uh, an interesting insight into a different way of life and all. So, yeah, I thought it was terrific. So I'm rating Witness a five-star, three-star film. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Raymond, this film had a child actor in it. But you ain't placed the child actor on your annoying kidometer scale. No, well remembered. So let's remind ourselves of the annoying kidometer scale. Yeah, who'd we got where? We'd got Kevin from Time Bandits. He was tolerable. I didn't mind him, really. Bit annoying, but not too bad. Emil from The Wild Geese. Bloody hell. Oh, my God, he was awful. But Paul from Outland, the worst. Daddy, daddy. Yeah, oh, crikey. Now, Samuel from Witness, where does he go on this scale? Well, he doesn't. Here's the thing. We need to extend the scale. Because he's the other side of the scale for me. Yeah, I thought he was superb. I thought he was brilliant in this, the kid. And had he not been so good, then probably the film wouldn't have been as good either. Yeah, if it had been played by Paul from Outland or Emil, that would have been bloody awful. Hey, I saw Emil the other day on an episode of Tales of the Unexpected. Yeah, he befriended a giant turtle. Yeah, and then he disappeared off to sea, riding the giant turtle, presumably never to be seen again. I bet his parents were devastated. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed my review of Witness Ravers. And if you did, poke the old like button for me. Give it a good old poke. Maybe you could use some rustic Amish farming tools to give it a poke. You know, if you've got them. Don't use any Black & Decker stuff. You'll knock your computer. Uh, many thanks as well to all of you who requested Witness. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you very much. As for the other requests, if yours weren't uh, lucky enough to get picked, yeah, hopefully we'll get around to doing some of them in the future. You know, but I'm sure we will do. Now remember to share any reviews with your mates and subscribe if you ain't already a subscriber. Very much appreciated. As are all the fantastic comments you keep putting on. Some of you really do say some very kind things and I love reading them, so thank you very much for that. And copyright box permitting, I'll be back with another review for you very soon. So I'll see you next time. Okie-doo!